Uh, we also want to make sure that the, the research programs that help support parents in their good parenting schools are continued and to make sure that we have the qualified staff who are compensated well, who have the education so that they can work with young children and their families. Well, so those are our primary agenda points. Okay. Well, we're heading into a very tight uh, fiscal year coming up next year. The new governor is going to have some really hard challenges. Uh, what are you going to be doing to, to combat those, the walls you're going to be hitting uh, financially? I think when when the, the candidates continue to understand the, the cost effectiveness and the savings behind it, that 40 years of research, in some cases kids have been tracked that long who went through high quality early learning programs, shows a return of, of 10 to $16 in terms of reduced prison costs, reduced prison spending, reduced welfare, increased earnings by those who go on to graduate from high school instead of drop out and, and, and consume our scarce resources that uh, when the, the, the next governor really understands the return that it's almost an investment we can't afford at not to make uh, as we uh, as we head into these uh, fis very fiscal and continue to be in these fiscally challenging times. And in the short term, I think it's important uh, for the governor to realize how important it is to keep parents employed. Uh, and one of the key components to parents working uh, with that peace of mind that their children are in a good, healthy, safe environment is uh, childcare. So that's the access to childcare, because that's about parents earning, children learning. In the last 15 seconds um, of this segment, uh, if uh, our viewers want to learn more about the coalition, where can they go? We have a website, mm -hmm. and it's uh, firststepspa.org, uh, and we would welcome people to go to that uh, website. It'll have some good information on when they should register to vote and when the election is. Okay, That's well, great. thank you both for joining thank us you. today. Thank we appreciate you. uh, your uh, coming today. And uh, we'll be back with the second segment of Behind the Headlines right after this. Behind the Headlines is sponsored in part by Connections Academy. If you were going to build a school around your kid, how would you do it? Fewer distractions? More attention from the teacher. More flexible schedule. More parental involvement. We're Connections Academy, a free online public school that creates a learning experience more focused on your child. Help your child make a stronger connection to learning at Connections Academy. Behind the Headlines is brought to you as a public service by the Pennsylvania Business Council envisioning a commonwealth in which residents enjoy a very high quality of life in sustainable communities. The council works aggressively to define key long-term policy strategies and solutions that make the commonwealth more competitive, creating and sustaining a better Pennsylvania. Additional underwriting provided by the Worrell Corporation Foundation, based in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and the American Home Bank, a nationally chartered and FDIC-insured, yet locally owned and operated bank in central Pennsylvania and by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Behind the Headlines is also supported as a public service by Daily Express, transporting construction, farm, and industrial equipment throughout the United States. Behind the Headlines is a production of the Susquehanna Valley Center for Public Policy, a nonpartisan, nonprofit research organization helping Pennsylvania build a brighter future. Hi, welcome back to the second segment of Behind the Headlines. In this segment, we're going to have another installment of the Arnold Report. And joining us is Ed Arnold, the chairman of the Susquehanna Valley Center for Public Policy. Ed, welcome aboard. Thank you very it's, much. Good to be back. Oh, uh, it's nice to have you back. Uh, well, our viewers have sent in some new questions for you. Uh, I think they reflect the angst of the time. Uh, I think uh, that uh, they show a, a growing concern uh, among the general public. Uh, the first question that we have for you today is what can the average person do to help control government spending at all levels? Uh, this person believes that government spending is being excessive at all levels and they're spending beyond their means. What can the average person do about this situation if you perceive that to be the first case? First of all, the person is absolutely is correct. Our government at all levels has made way greater promises than they can possibly keep. There is no question that, I don't care what the level of government is, the unfunded liabilities are brutal. 
uh, that uh, at the same time, we must, as individuals, start to get more involved. Uh, first of all, you start with yourself. The average American family has been living beyond their means. So first of all, get your own, live your own lifestyle within your means. Educate your children to do the same. Uh, be informed on the issues, and then when you realize what the facts are, notify whatever level of your policy. If you were to email or communicate with your local uh, elected official, whether it on the total local level, the state level, or federal level, it, you can have an effect especially if you also talk to your neighbors, get them to do it. And of course now we do have a fair number of new groups that are organizing, uh, the Tea Party, 912, and there are other political action groups that will have effects if we unite together and start to be heard, mm -hmm. as opposed to letting the lobbyists and the uh, basically unions and so on, your other groups that are already organized who have had way too much influence on our government. So people have to break that inertia uh, and actually concern themselves with these issues for the first time in many instances. That's correct. I think they do basically the, the average person in mass, in a group, but even just being involved himself, it is amazing that if you get, uh, you contact, especially today with the internet, it's very easy, but whatever method, uh, with your representative, it does have some impact. If there's a whole bunch of you, obviously, but each person is only one, one person is one person. Our second question is, can the American government go bankrupt? Is that possible? Uh, not only is it possible, but at the rate we are going, it's very probable, unfortunately. Our government is continuing to print money at a rate that there is a break point. Uh, and th the thing is that we keep talking about the budget, which of course is well over a trillion dollars, it's unsustainable. We cannot borrow money at that rate. We're borrowing as much money as the world is saving. Uh, that uh, right now, now the good news is you could say that the Americans are now more and more buying American treasuries, but we're still, over 50% of our debt is owned by foreigners. This is not tolerable because if those foreigners decide that our credit worthiness is not there anymore, and they stop buying it, we will be in a terrible position. Basically, we'll go bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So therefore, and, and we keep talking about the federal deficit, which is 13 trillion. There seems to be a and debate. That's, and that's the official figure. That's the official figure, but all the unfunded liabilities are more in the area of 100 trillion or some, and this is a number that even with our large economy, which, by the way, happens to be about 15 trillion. Yeah, I heard at the end of the Bush administration, those uh, liabilities totaled somewhere in the neighborhood of 54 trillion, and now, as you said, it's over 120 trillion. Now. And what we're talking about here is Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, Obamacare, the FDIC and bailing out the banks and your your deposits, the pension bailouts we're doing, and of course, the, really, the other giant one now is the housing guarantees. Most mortgages in this country are now guaranteed by our federal government. And Fannie Mae is probably a trillion dollar disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are numbers that, but again, the, the simple fact of life is that the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Uh, this is actually said by Confucius and repeated by Kennedy, I understand. Uh, so I guess we're in good company. Mm -hmm. That uh, uh, the, we, we've got to start working on these problems. We aren't going to solve them in a day. They are tremendously challenging. But there's another little simple statement which comes from me is you can't solve a problem unless you admit you have the problem. And I guess that is exactly why there's been uh, a lot of plaudits, uh, a lot of compliments given recently. And the popularity has been going up on the new coalition government in the United Kingdom with the conservatives led by David Cameron, the prime minister, and the liberal Democrats led by the deputy prime minister, Nick Clegg. And uh, they are tackling these, uh, this deficit, the structural deficit, in a way that no one anticipated. And they are acknowledging that there's a problem.